Hi, everybody. It's Big Anklevich. Is that really how you're going to do it? <laughs> Damn right. And this is Rich Outfield. Thank you for joining us. Hey, stop being ignorant. <laughs> uh, this yes. is uh, That Gets My Goat. That Gets My Goat special movie edition. Wait, they're kind of all movie editions, so there's nothing special about this. But welcome anyways, folks. We're here to talk a little bit about Ant-Man. No, no, I'm sorry. The card says Marvels. Oh, Ant -Man. damn. Once yeah. again, I missed it on the technicality. Do you think they have a... What game was that called? What? It was Seen It, I think. Seen It, that's it. The DVD game that probably no longer exists because people don't even use DVDs anymore. They just... It would have to be an, uh, a Netflix game now. It could be an app or so, or a, yeah or some internet game where you just go to. That would actually be kind of cool, and they could constantly upload yeah, new they keep, keep clips adding and just yeah. So you, you know you could play for an uh, you know a week and never get the same question. Yeah. Maybe they have a Marvel edition of that where it's always. But in that case, would it be Disney's Marvels? Ant-Man? <laughs> I don't think we've ever seen Disney's Marvels anything. So far, it's always been Marvels. Uh, anyways, yes, we went to Marvel's Ant-Man, as opposed to the other Ant-Man that are out there that don't belong to Marvel. And, uh, yeah, we're here to talk about it. What did you think of Marvel's Ant-Man? It was alright. Yeah? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that's pretty much all I that's, got to say. That's about all we got to say about Ant-Man. <laughs> it was all right. It's all right. It was... The thing is, I... And, and then we will never know what that movie was supposed to be. You know, Edgar Wright worked on that movie for years and years. Like Edgar, 11 wait, years wait. or 10 years or something Edgar like Wright Burroughs? Mm, no, no, that's not the same guy. Uh, and, uh... Hey, why did you do that? <laughs> Just to derail you. And then, you know, he bumped heads with Marvel Studios and he walked or was dismissed or I don't know. And he's brought and they brought Peyton Reed in when the movie already had a release date and already had all these elements in place. And, and so Peyton Reed Peyton Reed is the bring it was on. Was the guy. bring it on guy. Edgar Wright was the Shaun of the Dead guy. Shaun of the Dead guy. Okay. So they're both generally humor kind of guys, right? Or is Edgar Wright not? No, I, I yeah, they're, they're, they're both known for comedies. But yeah, this was just a passion project that Wright had been working on for all these years. And then, I mean, the rumors were that Marvel wanted to force him to tie it into the rest of the movies more than he was willing to. And that he was sick of making concessions, and so he just walked away. But So I have to wonder, you know, if the elements that I didn't think worked really well in this movie, would they have worked? With Edgar Wright at the helm, or would they not have been there? Or, I mean, we'll never know how different this would have been because there's no alternate universe where he, you know. There is it. actually that alternate universe. We just can't go to it. Oh, okay. Well, then. Unless you can shrink down to that level, to the subatomic level. Yeah. And then go through the quantum reality and come out at that one. Were there any little throwaway things like that that they put in the first half of this movie that they didn't follow up on obligatorily <laughs> at the end of the movie. Well, the only thing that I uh, was kind of surprised about was that when he went to the subatomic level, he didn't find Wasp there waiting for him. I know, I, I just... And went, hey, wait, there's Wasp right there! And then he grabs her and then goes big. The fact that it's a gazillion universes down here, how small we've gotten... <laughs> That she just happens to be here. Yeah, I totally expected him to run into her. And now, granted, that's spoilers, because we're talking about the end of the movie. It was kind of nice that he didn't. But still, you know, they could still have her out there and, and alive. And How long has that it been? 20, 30 years, something yeah. like that. Uh, it was 89 or something. I think I said 87 when she was lost, yeah. Let so, me ask you what you thought of the movie. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I'm sure there was elements that were probably lacking or confusing or something like that. Um, I know that as long as it's generally good, I will forgive those kind of things and not concentrate on them like a lot of other people do. I mean... I, I could never work for one of those cinema sins things where they count up all the things that didn't work 
because I let those things slide mostly. When I watch one of those kind of videos and they say, oh yeah, this really didn't work. And I'll be like, oh, I never thought of that. He's right, I hate this movie now. <laughs> oh, um. But yeah, so, uh, you know, and there was things, and I can't even think of them right now. Maybe they'll come up in our conversation. But things where I was just like, what? I don't, that probably doesn't work. Like, for example, they were trying to shrink down a person. And they were testing it on lambs. And every time the lamb would turn into goo. And then, at the end, the bad guy is going bad. And Hope Pym says, oh, it's not you. It's the chemicals messing with your brain. When did the chemicals get into his brain if everything that's been shrunk so far has turned to goo? And they finally got it to work like one day ago. I don't know. They, but they obviously he went bad like years ago. They set that up at the beginning of the movie that, that something was wrong with him. Um, Pim makes some kind of comment that the, the particles have affected him or whatever. But I, yeah, I never really got that. I, I, he sort of becomes a monster or whatever because we don't see his face at the end. And I guess that's why all these superhero movies constantly have the heroes taking off their masks because it humanizes these characters. And so for Yellow Jacket, oh, let's just leave his face covered because he becomes this insect robot monster. But yeah, I didn't... I, I, he seemed fine. You know, he was he was smart unless they didn't want him to be smart. I just, yeah, I never... I, I got the impression that, you know, he had tried to please Hank Pym and Hank Pym would not be pleased and there's one scene where he's got like tears in his eyes and I'm like wait what you're you're upset because because you're remembering Hank Pym not opening up to you is that what it is and but I never really got any affection between those two characters and I I don't know I, I, he wasn't a terrible bad guy but I just he hooked up with Hydra because there's money in it is that what it was I, I think it was more just to be bad <laughs> because Hank didn't show him the love that he needed and so he's just like whatever then I'm giving this to Hydra how do you like me now <laughs> oh snap yes I did okay well then that brings me to one of the things that I bugged the crap out of me was Scott Lang's little group of friends I, just, really? I, I didn't feel like they worked at all. and it, Oh, they were always so annoying. And they were supposed <laughs> to be funny and stuff, but it, it just, it mostly just irritated me. I don't know. I, 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 I wondered if they were there to click boxes, to check boxes, or <laughs> if it was because their antics would be humorous and allowing Paul Rudd, who is a comedian, to play, be the straight guy. Yeah, he didn't do a whole lot of... His comedy stuff, I mean, he had little bits here and there where he'd be like, oh, are you, uh, sure? I don't know. Just... Well, there was that part where he says, I just totally ruined the moment, didn't I? And I thought that was amusing. I, and I, you know what? I like Paul Rudd. I, th I think he was a good choice for the movie because he, uh, you know, he was likable and he was, he came across as smart and he wasn't quite as acerbic and smart assy as we've seen him in, in movies. And I think... He could have been. You could have had him have more of a sharp, mean wit. But, of course, they gave him that whole estranged daughter thing. Uh, although, was she estranged? I... She wasn't estranged. He was estranged from the wife and the fiancé, which was... I guess, but how long had he been in jail? And I, I don't know. A few years, I guess. But a few years and however old that little girl's life would have been her whole life. Anyway, I... She must have visited him in prison. Oh, okay. Well, there's that. I guess. I'm... She still loved him, no matter what. Aw. Okay, well... Which was, um... Yeah, I don't know. It was interesting, because they kept giving him crap about paying child support. And I think... And I suppose the cop and the woman weren't... They were just fiancé, so he would actually still owe child support. Once they get married, then he wouldn't have to do child support anymore. And that could have been off of his head if he just, you know... I don't know what he needed to do. But that was just a plot point so that they could say, okay, he needs money. And not just to buy drugs and whores. He's got to have some positive some other stuff too. use to, for his money. Anyway, what did you think of Scott Lang? Yeah, he was good. He was likable. 
I didn't mind his little group of friends. I thought they were pretty funny. And the really talkative one. The one that was the the Joker clone from, from Dark Knight. <laughs> See, I didn't which... realize that who that was until you told me right before we started recording. And now I'm just like, whoa, that guy. Yeah, we, we I saw him and I totally was like, oh, I, I know that guy from somewhere. And I could not think where. And it was just on the tip of my brain for a long time. And finally, I just had to look it up before we started recording. We figured it out. My daughter happened to watch The Dark Knight like yesterday. No, two days ago. So that made him fresh in my memory. But yeah, there was that guy and then the black dude. The, those two guys, the Joker guy and the black dude, really had less personality, I guess. See, I, I found the black dude to be pretty funny when he's like, there, there was another black guy who looked just like <laughs> me. Yeah, I mean, they had they had some good lines here and there, but they were much lower, I guess, on the scale as far as personality and everything. Than, than Michael the, Pena was. You know. Yeah, he was over the top the whole time, but that he, he was the guy that just lo loved to talk. And they did that deal where he tells a story and they would cu cut to the people... And they were talking, speaking and voice. they were speaking in his voice, which is great. You gotta love when they do something like that. I've seen that on a couple other things too, where they where they do that, which is always funny to see. I don't know a, a guy telling a story, and then you see a woman mouthing their lines. Gosh, where have I also? I saw them do that exact same thing very recently. I can't remember uh, where else I saw it though. Anyways, so you didn't like the friends. You didn't like the bad guy. I, well, I mean, I liked him, I think, probably better than I liked Ultron in Age of Ultron. But they both made about the, the same amount of sense to me, uh, just their their motivations. I, I guess with Yellowjacket, do you remember what his name was? It was like Darren started with a C. Was it Darren? I don't know. I can't remember. It was, yeah, something with a C. Cook. Okay. Cr cross. Okay, Darren Cross. Cross. You know, he had the, he it, it, daddy issues, I guess, with Pym. Which is supposed to be Ultron's thing. He has daddy issues with Pym as well. Yeah, well, in the comics. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, Ultron had daddy issues with Stark. But I never felt like that went anywhere. And maybe they were both supposed to be mentally ill, and, and that's that's fine. But uh, anyway, I, I don't know what the deal is on that. It just... I, I really liked the the shrinking stuff, you know, I, all the fun stuff that they did with the little tiny Ant Man and him getting big and little, and and the stuff with the ants was really cool too. Yeah, the superpower oh. part of it was really well done, I thought. In general, I thought the suit looked really cool. Yeah, they did a lot with the ants, although they didn't kill nearly enough ants. I, there was that moment where where the bad guy's holding an ant and it's like, well, why why would you allow it? Why is it not biting you? I think he had already killed it at that point. It was just in his hand because they were like really big mofo ants. Okay. Big enough that you could actually, like the size of your thumbnail or, you know. I think it had bit his neck and then he... Ah! And squished okay. it between his fingers. <laughs> he actually killed uh, Antony with, yeah. with a bullet. Which I thought, wow, that guy is a good shot because Yeah, that, I'm not sure Hawkeye could pull that off. That was pretty ridiculous. And then they did that a few times where they're shooting at Ant-Man or shooting at the ants or whatever. It's just like, why are you shooting? I mean, yeah, like you said, Hawkeye could probably not pull it off. And he's... A super, does he have a superpower? Or is he just a good shot? He's fighting an army of killer robots and he has a bow and arrow. That's, that's None his... None of it yeah. makes sense. He doesn't have any powers. No, he's just a really He's just a good shot. He doesn't have super powered good shot. He didn't get bit by a radioactive arrow. <laughs> he just shoots good. Cuz yeah, he's one of those guys I've always wondered about. Like he he seems frail like a regular person. But you could still have a superpower and still be frail like a regular person if your superpower was just shooting arrows really accurately. You yeah. always hit what you're trying to hit. You'd still be a normal person. You don't have to be... I complained about this a, a lot recently, I'm sure, but the invincibility that all the heroes seem to get for free with their powers. <laughs> they get a power and then also included is invincibility. 
Maybe I just missed that on the list of their powers. It's, I mean, Superman, I think, is supposed to be that way, but... Well, who is it you're thinking of? Or Black L- Widow? Or? Lots, yeah. Black Widow, Spider-Man, Iron Man. He doesn't even have powers. He takes so much beating in that suit. Open that suit up and it should be jelly every time. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, he's just pounded against walls and crap like that. It's just a suit of armor. It's not a... Force field? It's not a... Yeah, it's not a big thing of bubble wrap that he's wrapped up inside of that cushions all the blows. Anyways, I thought it was a good show. I enjoyed it. Uh, what did you think of the... What was the shoehorned in stuff, you think? Do you think the uh, Falcon fight scene was shoehorned in bit? Probably. Changing yeah. it. Oh, we've got to steal this thing from this old facility in upstate New York that has just recently become the new Avengers headquarters. Yeah, in, probably end of the last that movie. was... Uh... That was something. I mean, there were a couple of references to the Avengers, and uh, Pym at some point says, you know, when they're probably making buildings fall from, or cities fall from the sky or whatever. And He says, uh, what we should do now is call the Avengers. (laughs) I like that. Which is totally the truth. The excuse for why they don't call them is, I mean, I guess that's kind of the idea behind the Marvel Universe, is there's crap like this going on everywhere, and... (laughs) There needs to be lots of superheroes to stop it all. And you can't just call the Avengers to every problem. Which, you know, we've brought up before. Like, Iron Man 3. Why are there no other Avengers? You know, Captain America 2. Why didn't they just call in Iron Man to help, you know, attack this uh, thing that's happening? Yeah, that's always going to be a stumbling block when you've established how small this world is. Um... You know, and, and when we watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it's like, well, how come we, they don't see more superheroes? Although I think on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they've done a pretty good job of saying, well, we're trying to be under the radar. Under the radar and, and, and they run into superpowered people all the time. Yeah, they do. It's I just mean, not the ones we know. They've got Deathlock. They had uh, Absorbing Man. Yes. They get Sif in there every now and then. She's made two uh, cameos now. Just not the ones you want to see. They still haven't had Captain America on there, but the uh, the scene at the very very beginning that took place in '89 with Tony's dad and Peggy Carter, I liked that a lot. But yeah. I'm mostly I was just blown away by how good uh, young Michael Douglas looked. I, now you saw Tron Legacy, right? And you told and and I remember seeing Jeff Bridges in there, and I'm like, why does that look so wrong? What 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 is up with that? Because he's computerized, Jeff Bridges. Come on, he's inside Tron. Okay, but at the Er. very, very beginning, it's a flashback to when Garrett Hedlund is a kid. And so we get young Jeff Bridges, but he's Cylon (laughs) T-800 at Bridges at the door. Wait, I didn't get that at all with this. I just stared at Michael Douglas and I was like, wow, that... Have you seen that Terminator movie? I haven't. Oh, okay. Because, yeah, obviously you see in the trailer that they have a young... Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. Well, they did in the last one, too. And I, I loved that. I didn't know it was coming because I saw it when it first came out. And when you see young Schwarzenegger step out, I'm like, oh, that's so cool. And I guess what they did was that they just got a bodybuilder and put, like, a green mask on his head and digitally like stuck on. young Schwarzenegger's see, face on a bodybuilder. My brother-in-law was telling me that for something in the first Terminator, they had to make, like, a, a body mold of Schwarzenegger so they could, I don't know, blow his head off or melt him or something. Well, probably to make that prosthetic, the really bad Stan Winston prosthetic in the first movie. And uh, that they actually used that, that it's still around or whatever, and they used that mold, I don't know, put it in the... the they the digitally ch- scanned Yeah, it. the chamber or whatever, and put the tennis balls, the ping pong balls all over it. I don't know. I guess they probably wouldn't do that since it doesn't move, and that's what those ping pong balls are for. But yeah, they like scanned it and used that to make their well, that's, young Schwarzenegger. That's really cool. I mean, I haven't seen that movie, so I don't know how good it looks. But I thought that the young Michael Douglas looked really, really good. So, and it was neat to see Tony's dad and neat to see Peggy Carter again. Yeah. Uh, that Tony's dad was played by Iron Man 2's Tony's dad, yes. not by... Not by Captain America. Captain America slash Agent Carter's, Agent Carter's Tony's dad. Which, which I thought was which fine. Was, yeah, it was cool. Because he's at the end of his life, I guess. Although I, 
I, I sort of got the impression that he should be, have been dead by then. <laughs> yeah, nineteen eighty nine. Didn't he get killed in a car accident when Tony was like fourteen or something like that? I well, I hate to tell you, but I'm sure they did the math. Do you think they did? Okay, and uh, and that's why it took place in eighty nine. Yeah, and the problem is the math is not good for us. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Not that we don't know how to do math, but just when you do the math back, then it makes you realize how old you are. Oh, scary. Yeah, let's not talk about that. <laughs> um, I, I, let's see. There's probably a couple more elements we can talk about, but what did you think of... Uh, she wasn't Janet. She was Hope. Yes, Janet died. Uh, spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> long before. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she couldn't be Janet because Janet is... Although she might as she well had Dan- have, Janet's hair. Yeah, she might as well have been Janet because she looks exactly like her. But yeah, I guess Hope. I mean, Hope's a real character from comics. You know that, right? Is she really? I think she. I mean, I figured you would know. I oh, was I, asking for you to say yes, yes. I know she was in uh, Avengers uh, number one thirty three on page fifteen. She says, but she's um, Pam and Janet Van Dyne's daughter. From what I understand, it's like the the Marvel girl that's Scott and. Jean's daughter. Or oh, okay. So one of those time travel. Help. I don't know what I know. You, <laughs> you're already putting way more into it, but she does exist. I looked it up before because I remember seeing in one of those trailers or something like that, seeing her and going, "Whoa, is that the wasp? Really?" They gave her the wasp's hair though, and that can't have been yeah. an accident. No, I, I bet that she probably looks kind of like that in the comic books, anyways. But. Uh, uh, she looked just like the wasp, which was cool. Uh, the sad thing, though, was that little post-credits thing where they show her the suit, and it's like red, blue, and silver. What is this? <laughs> the the uh, Iron Patriot wasp? Why was it, it not black and yellow? Black and yellow? It's the wasp, yeah, it or maybe it's just because Yellow Jacket was the bad guy and he was black and yellow, and so they couldn't do it. I don't know. I just thought, boy, that's a letdown. Why would the wasp be blue and red? <laughs> but see, I was surprised that they set that up at all because I was like, well, where are we going to see her wear this costume? And what was your answer? The, in one of the Avengers movies, I'm sure. they're Or Civil War. Civil War may include them as well because that's what our post-post-post-credits sequence was. Not the mid-credits or the quarter-credits or the <laughs> one-eighth-credits sequence, but the actual post credit sequence was weird because generally they have something to do with the movie that they were in as well as whatever they're foreshadowing. Maybe he was saying, I know a guy like he knows Ant-Man, yeah, which I'm guessing totally maybe that's what Ant-Man, we're talking yeah. about, but what in the hell? It was just Captain America and Bucky and Falcon. And they're just saying, oh, wow. Well, uh, well, there was something wrong with Winter Soldier, right? Uh huh. He was injured or he was. Sitting there holding. The, what? He was, it was like his head, his hand stuck in a machine. Oh, was that what like, it was? Like, oh, my, my iron arm has been smushed into these gears <laughs> and I can't get out without Ant Man's help. <laughs> I don't know what the heck was going on there, but it was. I think that's what it was, though, because Anthony Mackey says, I know a guy. And it was just weird. It was weird, but we've seen a bunch of weird ones, like the Howard the Duck one. The Howard like... the Duck one w- went perfectly, at least with the movie. <laughs> okay. It was straight out. I mean, they just showed, hey, here's some little po- post-explosion of the collector's place. Um, no, the weird one was the Thor, Thor two, where they come in with like the cube, and they give it to the collector, and, and he give goes, it. Yeah, where it's like really weird. And it's, you know, Ragnar the Gigantic, or whatever his name is. What's his name? Volstag the Enormous. Volstag the Enormous. Okay, I was close, but off in all regards. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, that one was weird. The whole thing, you're just like, what the... Um, But if, have you seen that since you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy? Does it suddenly make sense where you're like, oh, well, now we know who this guy is and we know where they went? And I mean, I guess it makes sense, but only sort of. Okay. It's like this one where it doesn't go with the movie that it was with. Whose uh, cameo you think was lamer? Um, Hawkeye's in Thor or Falcon's in Ant-Man? <laughs> I didn't think either of them were lame. I mean, 
Hawkeye's Hawkeye Wolverine. we had never seen before. You'd never seen him before, and you never really see him there either. You just see like his feet and his hands and like uh, the side of his head, which is oh, I've got I've got him. I got you want me to shoot? I I thought that that was really. And you cool. never actually see him. And he's just there, and you're just like, wow, that wasn't even shot the same day, was it? That no, was like it was shot months and years months later. later. After they hadn't even cast him when this movie was coming. No, and that that is true. But I there's that part where he's like, I'm starting to root for this guy. I liked that. I. I I, I don't know. And again, once you've seen Avengers, then that scene in Thor, you're like, oh, hey, that's Hawkeye. Cool. Uh, in this, at least, we knew who Falcon was. We'd seen yeah, him in two other we movies. We knew who all those guys were. It's just like, hey, guess what? There's other movies, too. Did you guys <laughs> know that? Because if you didn't, you're, you're freaking confused right now. Why? Well, um, <laughs> It was probably pretty obligatory, you know, that it happened to be him or whatever. But I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed seeing these two guys that were, you know, both good guys, fight, and because you know, that's what comic books do. Yeah, I did yeah. like that bit. I, I have to say that I totally liked Falcon's cameo in this show way more than I liked Hawkeye's in the other one, which you know wasn't terrible. It was just tacked on. I don't know. It wasn't amazing either. It was just like, hey, there's a dude. And he doesn't shoot in the end. Whereas this one, yeah, you got to see him fight, which I love. It was one of the best parts about the Avengers. When the Avengers came out, is how you got to see Thor fight Captain America, fight Iron Man, you know, the three-way battle going on. And that was a lot of fun. And I, I thought this one was a lot of fun, too. And it's interesting. I mean, Falcon really acquitted himself well. In that fight, I wouldn't think Falcon would have been that awesome, but I guess if you have goggles that help you see the ant, <laughs> that does help. Yeah, and that's another thing is how did all these people see him so much? You know what I mean? Ant Man should have been undetectable ninety percent of the time. Yeah, anywhere he went or whatever. Because why would you ever look at something that's a quarter of an inch tall? Right. But yeah, you never notice, and and I'm glad that they did that sometimes. Like when he escaped from jail or whatever, and the cops came out, and he's just right there, um, and they're looking around. They didn't see him. They don't go like, "Wait, what? <laughs> Look at that little tiny insect! I think there's something on its back." <laughs> um, and that was good. But yeah, the bad guys at the end shouldn't have been like the one part where he's running through the uh, mock-up of the building changed from Pym Tech to. What did we decide his name was? Something with a C? Crown? Chain? Clark Cook. I said Cook, and that was the stepping stone that got us to his name. And now I forgot it again. I want to say Crook, which I know it's not that, because that would be such a giveaway. Um, Can't we just call him uh, Yellow Jacket? Yellow Jacket. Well, Even it was called Ye Yellow Jacket yeah. Tech. Okay. Which is actually Georgia Tech. For those of you who uh, know, and they it was got a really good basketball team. This year. And it was filmed in Georgia. Strangely, this <laughs> this movie, which was set in San Francisco, had Georgia film all over the end of the credits. I think they're all shot in Georgia now. I don't understand how that works. They just made a Marvel Studios has a whole movie studio down there with sound stages and stuff. Yeah. That and they just that they call Pinewood Studios now, for some reason. It's like, why? They, no, that one's taken, guys. You don't get to call that they Pinewood. Built it Make with, up something new. They built it with Pinewood. That's why. Peach Tree Studios or something, you know? Anyway. They don't have peaches in Georgia. Of course they do. That's, <laughs> no, no. They, all the peaches in no, the world come from Georgia. They don't have them. Just like cocaine comes from Colombia, peaches come from Georgia. No, sorry. But yeah, I, what did they do? Build a whole, like, mini... San Francisco? No, I'm sure they shot in Atlanta or someplace like that for the city. <laughs> but oh, that's despicable. It's like it's like uh, Rumble in the Bronx being shot in Toronto. <laughs> that is just like the worst uh, example of one city faking in for another one. The show has Bronx in the title, and they didn't even shoot in the Bronx. <sighs> Hulk was shot in, or was set in San Francisco too. The the old Hulk was the new Hulk in San Francisco. The, no, no, it, it wasn't. Was, huh? it, it was in Brazil. I remember there yeah, was they Brazil. Had Brazil. And then the rest was in Harlem, I think. Well, the big fight with Abomination was. In Harlem. Was that in Harlem? 
So that, when he says the last time he was in New York, he broke Harlem, doesn't he say that? In, yeah, uh, he said that in, in one of, in Avengers. I think. <laughs> That's fun. Three. So, um, is there any more to say about the no, show? No, there's probably not much. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I thought it was fine, but it didn't. I, I, I didn't love it, and I don't know. I mean, we were talking about the, the music, uh, when they show the Avengers building, you know, because because he gets there and, uh, and they think that it's an old abandoned Stark Industries like warehouse. I think or it's the like old that. abandoned, old abandoned amusement park. And the clouds part, and it has got a great big A on it. And you hear... Stop singing the wrong and song. <laughs> that's not the wrong song. And, okay, so you do the Avengers theme then. Because you can't. That is close to what you were doing, but it was a little off. A few extra notes here and there. You're wrong. Anyway, they played that, and I was like, neat. I didn't hear it. I think you're crazy. Okay. But okay, I, I like that you heard it and that it was neat. Because, again, we've complained about just the huge lost opportunity that that, that is. You know what I mean? I mean, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, they're so known for their music. They might as well, I, I mean, it's like an extra character in the film. Because they have these it, Jaws... Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Harry Potter, these movies, and not all of them were John Williams, just most, they used their soundtrack to make that extra, everybody knows the Indiana Jones song, everybody knows the Superman song, they hear it, and immediately, you're transported to another time and place. I found that women need a softer porn. <laughs> uh, one with... Character. With costumes. Uh, anyways, <laughs> these, <laughs> this music, it, it's, it really is that extra character. And it, it is a selling point. I mean, like, when they haven't done it with... Well, maybe I guess they did a little with the, the this new... And we saw the trailer for the new Star Wars at the start of this, which is the first time we've actually seen it in a theater. I've seen it on YouTube a bunch of times, but... They start off with the speeder bike off in the distance going past the wrecked Star Destroyer and you hear na, 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 na. and boom! All of you're a sudden there. you're tingling, your, your skin is tingling, you got goosebumps and you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that's all you need. Same thing, and I, I've told this story before where Superman Returns came, that movie was coming and I was like, nah, I don't really care one way or another about this movie and then I saw the commercial and that music played and I was like oh my gosh when does this open I am going that day I was crapping my pants just because that music was playing with it and I was just like this is going to be the greatest movie ever I don't care what Rotten Tomatoes says when yeah when Luke tells whoever he's telling about the nature of the force in this new movie and you hear the same music that played when Ben Kenobi was talking about the nature of the Force. You will suddenly be a little kid again. Yeah, I mean, it's just it, it's it works on a sub atomic level, a sub atomic level down where, in the quantum right, foam where where time and space <laughs> become irrelevant, become one. Yes, uh, it does. It works on some level that you aren't even aware of. The same way that a smell can bring you back to when you smelled that before or the place that you know what I'm saying unfortunately that always happens to me when you fart and I remember the last damn time which usually is only about five minutes before I'm sorry <laughs> Mr. Kettle what were you calling me but uh, uh, but yeah it's it's such a lost opportunity with these movies worst of all is they're all interconnected you could establish okay Iron Man here's his theme song Hulk here's his theme song Captain America, here's his theme song. Avengers, here's their theme song. And now you could keep hitting on them all the way through all these movies and keep bringing them up and bringing them up until everybody be like, yes, I hear that movie, I, I hear that song, I think Hulk, yeah! It's Punch totally, him, Hulk, Hulk smash! It's totally, you're totally right. It and could be so rad. You're preaching to the friggin' choir, man. You're preaching to the, 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 the bishop's wife or the... <laughs> The what? What is? What was? The, was that a Whitney Houston? The movie? son of a preacher man. What was the Whitney Houston movie called? I think it was called the Son of the Preacher's Son, something like that. Only man, Only man could who make ever reach man. Was the son of a preacher man? Uh, yeah, you but, know, 
Ant-Man is another one. They could have done that. The worst thing is, for a lot of these guys, they actually gave them a theme song, <laughs> and then the next movie came out and they didn't use it. I know they didn't. Don't yell don't at me. Wanna, I'm not yelling when, at you. I'm doing a show here. But when I'm in, ranting. When in Avengers, when Captain America saves the day on when the helicarrier is falling and he takes out those guys with his shield, they played like nine... Nine bars, no, one measure. Yeah, one measure of the Captain America theme, and it was divine. It dude. was. It would have it been was so rad. And I know I use that example a lot, but it's like the only time they've done it. Although, when you see the Avengers building, you hear dan it, dan it, dan it. Okay, okay, it's probably the boss theme from Empire Strikes Back that I'm humming. <laughs> but I just that that the sort of theme. It's just rad. Please tell me that John Williams didn't make a Bosk theme. <laughs> we see Bosk for what five seconds. <laughs> He's Probably just standing not there, and, he goes, and then he's gone. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's 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 such a lost, a wasted opportunity. Um, even Batman, Dark Knight, did a better job. And I'm hey, you fudge and take that back. And I'm not a big fan. Dent, of, dent. Doesn't matter. Dent. They played Dent. it again Dent. and again and again. Dent. That's all they play in that movie, until he gets on the bat pod at the end of the movie, and you actually hear the Batman theme. They played it all the way through. They did not. All the way through that movie, over and over and over you again, lied. you hear that song. Whether you like it or not, doesn't matter. They did it a lot, and I know because my daughter just watched Batman Begins, and then the very next day watched. The Dark Knight, so I heard it a lot. Um, and I'm not saying that it's great, because I'm not a big fan of, uh, uh, what's his face? Zimmer. Zimmer, thank you, Hans Zimmer. Some of his stuff is good, but mostly his his music is just... Okay, so you are, are pointing out what I was trying to point out a minute ago, but you're doing it accurately, so... You're proving my point for me. Da 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 yeah. da da is the Dark Knight theme. No, Dent, da, I, I, mean, I can't the, do. The I, I'm doing Survivor, Eye of the Tiger, <laughs> but it's it's similar to that. It's like dan 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 dan. No, except for not had, nearly that musical. You had the tune. Okay, you do it. Yeah, it's dun 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 dun. That's the Batman theme song, and they played it over and over and over again. And that no, they don't. In both of those movies, there's an hour in the movie before you hear that but uh, they did a better job than these Marvel movies did because as I was whining about and complaining before we started recording Avengers has a good theme and they played it for again a one measure or whatever <laughs> when the, the Avengers title comes up and then it went back to nothing and then they played it right at the very end when they said oh, it's a promise and then they play the theme song, and then it cut to black, and they played it in the credits. So That's the only time you get to hear it is in, in the credits. The, the thing that I was so upset about in Age of Ultron, they did in the first Avengers also? Yes. They're, that theme song is great. It's good. They should have used it, but they didn't. And if they would just, you know, that's what we've been harping on is play it more. Unfortunately, nobody listens to our podcast at Disney. Nobody listens to our podcast at all. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, uh, uh, before we started shooting, shooting, whatever we're doing right now, I said I'll give I'm you. I'm shooting you uh, afterwards. I didn't but that's... say I'll, I'll give you. Someone will give you ten thousand dollars <laughs> if you can hum the Ant Man theme song. And boy, I'd like to just open it up to the freaking audience as well, because. Okay, I'm gonna hum it right now. Ready? <laughs> wow. I, I was just hoping to get ten thousand dollars. I figured I'd take a stab. I have really have no idea. Now, the the score was done by Christoph Beck, who, uh, who I know from the Buffy Vampire Slayer series until he got too big for his britches. Uh, oh, I just know him from that Frozen movie. He did Frozen. No, he was in Frozen. He was the guy with the the, the ice business, the sled guy. Oh, well, the, he's multi talented. <laughs> <laughs> But I, yeah, I just, I, the score didn't really, I don't remember the score. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't either. It's not memorable, which, you know, I mean, maybe oh, but, but, was... Okay, sorry, sorry, let me interrupt, though. You haven't seen Jurassic World, but you've seen the trailer. 
And when in the trailer they play on the piano, yeah, suddenly you're like, holy yeah. crap! I am a it's human being and I feel same, again. Same thing as that Superman. It's um, the exact same thing. And the, when they same do that composer. in Jurassic World, they they play it a couple of times, and I think they play like the the fr my friend the Brontosaurus or whatever at one sad moment in the movie, and you're you're transported. Yeah magically to how you felt in a totally different movie That's why it that... is a shortcut it's an easy thing you know guys the filmmakers <laughs> you 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 are somehow able to cheat and get emotion where you haven't earned it that's why, and that why movie, do you not use a cheat like that? That's why that movie is the number one box office movie of all time. Has it reached that yet? It has to have by now. I mean, your reports no, it keep hasn't showing it skyrocketing. I think it's still number four. I don't well, know. I haven't looked behind the Dark Knight. No, it's past Dark Knight long ago. Oh, what? Avengers was number three. So, so number two is Titanic, and number, number one two is, is Titanic, and number one Avatar? is Avatar. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I was confused. <laughs> anyway, I have no idea how. Oh, oh, just the dun, 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 yeah. It's a, dun, dun, all that music from Jurassic Park, and then it has a couple of really good themes that you would remember and would take you back. And uh, yeah, that's what they should be doing. They should be building that with these movies, and they have a movie every few months, so they could just hit on it here and then here and then here, and you would never forget it. It's so much. It could be so much more effective than any of these other movies have been. Because with them, they had, you know, with Star Wars, it was a three-year wait before you got to hear that in a movie again. With all these Marvel movies, it doesn't have to be that at all. We saw Captain America. Why didn't we hear his theme? We <laughs> saw Falcon. He should have a theme. He should. That's the thing. But not everybody is John Williams. And, and we've had that conversation, too. There must be people that are like, that is old school, or that is retro, or that is lame. I don't know. I mean, there may even yeah. be people that are like, well, that is a cheat. They're wrong. And I, I don't know why you would consciously say no to something like that. Yeah, that's like saying, hey, you know, people who use hammers are cheating. You pound on a nail with a rock. <laughs> and that's the way it should be. And if you're going to use a hammer, will you suck? <laughs> okay. Because I'm sorry, that's just, that's totally cheating. Or worse, probably more accurate, those people that use nail guns, they're so lame. I'm going to use a hammer because it takes way longer. All With right. a nail gun, you could just go, Pach! it's just a cheat. Go straight to the heart. Pach! With a hammer, you go, <clears throat> And it takes like 15 hits, and so, of course, they don't hit that many times, and the nail never makes it in. But anyways, yeah, that uh, was a total rant off topic, really, because... But we keep bringing it up because people keep doing it wrong. Look, I don't want them to reboot the Indiana Jones series. I don't. I, I think that that's a mistake. As long as Harrison Ford is 80% alive, they should, uh, you know... <laughs> the plane crash attach, did not finish him off. They attach strings to him and stuff, you know, and marionette him around... But the second the new indie steps out and you hear that John Williams theme, some little switch in way back in your medulla oblongata is going to switch. And you'll be like, hey, that's Indiana Jones. Yeah. Even if you're like me and you've got little fists, and I don't want, I want to hear before I eat my dad. Then you suddenly you'll be like, oh, hey, Chris Pratt is Indiana Jones. He is Indiana Jones. You're right. He is. Uh, I, why somebody would not embrace that huge of an advantage. Uh, it's a magic trick, dude. It's a get out of jail free card. And I, I, yeah, it's someday we'll have to sit down with somebody who actually makes these decisions and say, why, why, why would you not do that? Uh, like X Men 1 and 2, when, you know, that's like, let's throw out all of the themes from the first X Men movie and we'll get a new composer for the second one. Now, maybe uh, Michael Kamen was dead and they're like, okay, we need to get a new composer. I think he was but dead. Was he dead by then? Or I, was I don't know. Maybe he was on death's door. But. It's, it's one of those questions where it's like, why? it's as important as asking back, you know, one of these lead actors yeah. for your sequel is ask back the guy who did the score and have him build on that first score. I, I, uh, oh, geez, and if you I, don't ask the guy back, you still got to own the rights to it, right? I mean, you paid for it or whatever, so you can just say, hey... I know, John Williams, you don't want to do this new Superman movie, but we're just going to have John Ottman use your themes, all right? Okay, cool. Thanks, man. 
Love you. You could do that with all of them. You don't have to have Ramin Jawandi come back to do um, Iron Man 2. You could just have somebody else use that same Macarena song that he did. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Can you do that? Not for $10,000, but how does it go? I probably could. Hold on. Let me think about it, because I have it. That's what they would always do for That him. sounds really good, but how come it doesn't sound like a Macarena to me? Because it doesn't really. That's just people oh. being jerks. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Well, but anyways... I, anyhow, I, I don't know. The, the, the thing of, uh, we said a long, long time ago is they set up a sequel to Ant-Man uh, with the, you know, the wasp suit and all that. And, and I, I think I would see an Ant-Man 2 if they said we're going to make an Ant-Man yeah, 2. Yeah, they did say he will return, but they do that with all of them. But, uh, I mean, how successful would this movie have to be for them to do an Ant-Man 2? I mean, where is the line? Because you would ask me, well, how, how well did this do? And I think it did like 58, 57 million its opening weekend. Which for any other movie, they'd be like, yay, we rule. But for a Marvel film, everybody's saying, wow, they haven't had one gross this low since The Incredible Hulk. And, and yeah, but it's Ant-Man. Of course it's not going to gross what Avengers made, right? Isn't it ludicrous to imagine that Ant-Man would be a $100 million opener? It is. What did Guardians of the Galaxy open, though? I think that's what they're all trying to compare it to and saying that was their risk and that one really paid off and this risk really is not the Guardians of the Galaxy. Maybe their promotional campaign wasn't enough? Well, the Guardians promo was really strong. It was pretty everybody good. Everybody wanted to see that. But it just it felt so different and so unique and new and special uh, and maybe that's what a an Edgar Wright Ant-Man would have felt but at the same time it's still I mean isn't Ant-Man like the poor man Spider-Man? Is he? I don't know. I am just saying I wouldn't compare him to Spider-Man. The Spider -Man, fact that he gets but... small, uh, did you notice they they, they mentioned Spider-Man in this movie? Yeah, I did. I did <laughs> notice that. And so, who who would be the guy who jumps? <laughs> Toad? I have no idea, but <laughs> it was a good jumps, opportunity the to guy play. Who swings. They could have played. The, oh yeah, the the, spider, the new Spider-Man theme. Do they have a new one? <laughs> oh, I I don't know. I, See, I that's been... Spider. That that's the one of the problems with some. Of, didn't they have uh, Danny Elfman do like the Avengers soundtrack? They for did this last one. Yeah, nothing special about it. Which was the same case with the Spider-Man soundtracks. It was just like. But, but spy, um, Elfman's the Spider Man theme, you could probably identify. I can. Because you remember it was like. Yeah. And it was something like. I don't know. Something that kind of gives you the and idea. And do you know of how you know that? Because they brought it back again and again. Yeah, also because I have the soundtrack and I listen to it a lot. That's all right. Crazy. I made a whole disc up of all these superhero theme songs, and then we would play Name That Tune with my kids. Uh, and uh, that's the real reason why I'm able to spit out a lot of these pretty easily. But yeah, the Spider-Man theme was not memorable. It's just another one of those where they're not... Well, it was Taking Danny Elfman's Batman theme again, only just not not as good, not as memorable. Or the as Batman good. theme song was, but he, I mean, he's he's done that, that Batman theme and riffs on the Batman theme for years and years and years. Anytime they bring him in to do a movie like this, or Dick Tracy, or Dark Man, or if they invent a whole new theme song for Spider-Man, will you be upset that they didn't bring the Elfman theme back? I, I won't be upset. What I will want and expect is that they use it again the next movie after that. Which they won't do. They'll be like, okay, that was nice, but now we're going to get this other guy to do the theme <laughs> song, and he's going to make up some completely original stuff you've never heard before. And it's just going to be... No, not even that. Don't. No, stop that. I'm trying to do the Dark Knight I know. Thing. Don't do it. Because most of the Dark Knight theme was just... And so was Inception and everything. That's all they do anymore is just like make you tense. That's what the theme song is for now is just to make you like... Your, your neck kind of start scrunching into your shoulders as you're like... There's something that's pushing me down. So Ant-Man didn't have a memorable theme. And once again, I'm irritated about it. 
But it, in general, I liked it. I thought it was a good movie. I thought it was funny in lots of parts, which it kind of needed to be. I thought it was kind of fun that, you know, the little goofiness that they put into the trailers, like where he says, I need you to be the Ant-Man. And he says, uh, can we change the name? That wasn't in the movie. wasn't in the movie. I, the there other was another part line where he where says, like, yeah. I need you to be the Ant-Man. And he says, huh. That wasn't in the movie. A lot of that stuff, which I remember there being a bit from Men in Black that was that way. Yeah, where he says, where he's like, you, how, how does this work? And he says, I have no idea. Yeah, that bit, which was in the trailer but not in the movie, where I just thought, whoa, they did a joke just for this trailer. That was the first time I've ever noticed that. Now it seems like they do a fair amount of that, I guess. I don't know. Maybe they just use other takes. Those would have been outtakes on the outtake reel. Now they're on the uh, trailer. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I would recommend seeing it if you haven't. Although, if you haven't seen it and you've listened all the way to this point to hear me recommend that, then I've already ruined everything for you, and I'm very sorry. But it's your own fault because you know better. But, yeah, that's me summing up. Do you have any summing up to do? No, I mean, I can complain about one last thing if you oh, want okay. me to. Oh, okay. Make it did, quick. Why did Yellow Jacket go to the little girl's room at the end? Just... To be villainous? Is that what it was? <laughs> I think he went there because he lost. The Ant-Man, like, got knocked away, got away or flew away, or he'd lost, basically, track of him. And he knew that he would show up at his girl's room. How did he know this? I... I'm not sure. He knew all about Scott Lang's daughter? He did, daughter though. And... He knew, like, when he, they thought that he didn't know anything, and he caught him in there, and was like, hey, and Scott Lang... Is the guy you chose instead of me. And I hate you for that because I'm the good guy that you should love. So he somehow knew all about Scott Lang and all about all their little plans. How he knows, I don't know. He had a tiny. But I mean, he went there to around. threaten the daughter or he went there to kill the daughter? He went there. Why? I think he was just there to yeah, basically threaten the daughter so that he would show up and he would be able to kill him there. I don't think he cared about the daughter at all. He never really tried to menace her or do anything. He was just kind of there until he showed up. That was, I think, the point of that. They didn't hit you over the head with it, I guess, or spell it out for you, but they could have had a quick scene where he says, I need to get him. Wait. I know where. And then he goes there or something. Really throw away. But yeah, so summing up that just felt like studio notes to me one of those where it's like it's not okay that it's a bunch of people he's saving it has to be his daughter you know what i mean whenever you see that kind of crap he's like who could be on the plane that's close to him <laughs> and you're just like oh why it's just people in the plane what was Guys the just... what was the sh what was that that i just saw that oh it was on the batman cartoon the joker was gonna make a train crash and then uh, Commissioner Gordon's wife says, my mother's on that train. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, of course she is. Could be worse. It could be that plane from Spider-Man 2. <laughs> uh, and by Spider-Man 2, I mean amazing Spider-Man 2. Was it amazing? Really? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Uh, and we'll see you again next time. I'm Big Yankovic. All right, I'm Mish Outfield, and uh, Ant-Man catchphrase. Okay. That was a good one. As good as his theme song. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons non-commercial 3.0 license. Boy, they must really think a lot of themselves. <laughs>